Super Deuce Coupe LTD2 GT. Like the 77 Dodge Monaco, Ford's new LTD2 is now an intermediate, up named to standard size status. In 72, Ford turned the Torino into a shortened galaxy, but Ford recognized the march of longer, wider, and heavier had reached its zenith. The decision to merge the Torino with the LTD, creating the LTD2, came soon after Ford started work on the downsized Mustang II. The idea was to rec recreate Lee Iacocca's extra-lively 1963 Ford XL by putting the LTD on a lightened Torino platform. The 4,000-pound LTD2 has livelier handling and acceleration than the 4,500-pound 76 LTD, but offers similar quiet and opulence. There is evidence of the Torino skeleton inside, but Ford expanded hip room and headroom with thinner doors and a half-inch taller roof. The LTD2 uses similar lightening tricks as the 77 Chrysler B bodies and new GM big cars. Ford reduced curb weight from the Torino by 244 pounds on hardtops and 248 pounds on sedans. A third of the weight derives from new styrofoam-backed bumpers. These replace the massive shock absorber bumpers, so bumper width, depth, and jut-out also decrease. The lighter bumper has in turn allowed lighter frame rails. Another 100 pounds comes from substitution of plastic for steel parts. To capitalize on the lighter weight, Ford offers a performance standard size car for the first time since the 1970 XL. Ford says the LTD2 GT 7.5 liter is meant to recall both the 66 7 liter luxury touring big Ford and Ford's first 66 Fairlane GTA midsize supercar. Suspension. Ford made a big leap in handling control, we think catching up to GM, with a heavily revised steering system. It features burnished steering gears and a novel power steering pump that keeps the mesh gears constantly under a small load. This eliminates play and backlash. With a higher efficiency power steering pump for maximum pressure through the range, it vastly improves your tactile sense of the front wheel's doings with no kickback. Nor did the pump get overloaded in our pylon weaving course, as did GM's otherwise excellent variable ratio power steering. This might be because of Ford's higher steering gear ratio, which requires four turns lock to lock, while GM has as few as three turns and Chrysler has been at three and a half turns for 20 years now. Thankfully, this slower ratio is not felt at highway speeds where play and wander has been all but banished. In parallel parking, we thought, yes, it's a little slower, but you needn't buy a suicide knob for the steering wheel. The lighter weight, much of it coming from the front of the car, drastically improves turn-in. It's probably the reason the steering ratio feels quicker. Porpoising and brake dive are far less pronounced than in the luxury Torino Elite we tested two years ago. Porpoising is when the front and rear are out of sync in rebound undulation. It's something that's plagued rear coil sprung cars probably since Buick first bragged about frictionless springs. Braking has improved thanks to the lower weight and sticky Firestone radial tires. This is Ford's most GM type of car, all coil suspended with a unit body on a perimeter frame. All other Fords are rear leaf sprung unit bodies. Using the same spring rates as last year's Torino effectively increases ride stiffness in the lighter car. The weight loss and new steering gave the GT 7.5 liter quick reflexes on our high speed test course. This is more than an appropriate tribute to the GTA because it's carrying 500 pounds more body weight, but drives like a much lighter car than the old Fairlane. Radial tires raised to 30 PSI developed a lateral G reading of 0.71. The 7.5 liter M or 385 block is 55 pounds lighter than the 66 GTA's 390 FE block, which gives the new GT 7.5 better weight distribution. We've tried Pontiac's newly revived full-size supercar, the Bonneville SE. It's a better sorted out handler overall, but was slower through our closed road course simply because of the sheer power advantage of the Ford. Engine. 
The 7.5 liter is the stratified charge programmed combustion or PROCO direct fuel injection engine we first reported on in our July 74 issue. The idea is to more thoroughly burn the fuel so that a catalytic converter is not needed to cleanse nitric oxide and hydrocarbons from the exhaust. It has 16 spark plugs and dual zone direct fuel injectors mounted in the cylinder head. It sprays an inner cone of rich fuel mixture into a small combustion chamber within the cupped piston, which is ignited first. The leaner outside cone of fuel mixture is allowed to diffuse in a high velocity swirl of combustion air before it ignites an instant later from both the second spark plug and the spreading flame from the pre-combustion chamber. The compression ratio was a 1960s like 11 to 1. However, the 15% exhaust gas recirculation ratio, thin fuel mixture, and the very carefully controlled combustion allows use of regular 89 octane unleaded. The 237 horsepower 7.5 liter option has sticker shock of $780. It includes a $180 trailering package, but not the $505 air conditioner as it does in the Thunderbird 2, where it is priced at $1,170. Once considered a cruising ratio, now the 3 to 1 ratio trailering axle is the drag gear. It made our test car Ford's strongest in years. We looked up our old test numbers for the original 66 GTA and were amazed to find worse acceleration performance than the GTA 7.5 and worse gas mileage. The 66 Fairlane returned only 10 to 14 miles per gallon with the 70 inch smaller 390 engine. The 7.5 liter scored the best acceleration we've seen in Ford since the 73 Mustang 352 Cobra jet with the 7.3 second 0 to 60 sprint. Again, this was faster than the 7.6 second time of the 66 GTA Fairlane we tested so many, many moons ago. The GT's quarter mile took only 15.23 seconds at a 91 mile per hour trap speed. The 7.5 liter is tuned to allow the efficiency and performance efforts to overlap. The 2.75 inch crankshaft main journals with special tin alloy bearings have less friction than lead copper bearings Ford usually uses, so it has comparatively low parasitic losses for its massive displacement. It uses a moderate 260 degree duration camshaft. Cylinder head ports and piston walls are polished. A simple hot rodding trick that eases breathing, reduces emissions, and also prevents spark knock. The intake manifold runner length is sonically tuned precisely to the direct injection 7.5 liter. The 7.5 is the only Ford passenger car engine with standard dual exhausts since the Proco does not require catalytic converters. The 7.5 rates a 35 horsepower increase over the 76 460. It makes 369 foot-pounds of torque at 2,400 RPM. That's over 50 foot-pounds greater than Chrysler's Lean Burn 400 and 15 foot-pounds greater than last year's 4-barrel 460. LTD GT2 with the $780 fuel-injected stratified charge 7.5-liter V8 is Ford's most powerful car and likely the fastest car you can buy off the dealer lot this year. Crisper, clean look lines evoke the Buick Regal and back. The freewheeling sport appearance package includes the Magnum 500 wheels, GR70 white letter tires, GT grill badge, and yards of tape stripes. These are a much cheaper take on the freewheeling Torino's massive white paint stripe. The Torino hardtop length is cut 4 inches to 210.4 on LTD2. 1.7 inches shorter than the new downsized Chevrolet. The LTD2 hardtop is 512 pounds lighter than the 76 LTD and 244 pounds lighter than the 76 Torino. The AM FM stereo plays 8 track tapes. It's Ford's second best radio and worth the cost. It was the only real luxury element of the test car. LTD trim level has wood grain, but we would have preferred the optional engine-turned applique. 
Our car had full instrumentation with a tachometer and luxury steering wheel. Ford's automatic floor shifter hasn't changed much since the GTA's day. The interior was indeed grand, with Lamar all-vinyl bucket seats that securely held us in place. We liked the tall, padded center armrest. The automatic transmission has a lower stall speed torque converter. Since this engine doesn't use a smog pump, it can have a lower idle speed so that creep at stoplights is not any worse. The large diameter torque converter is actually a big part of the 7.5 liters miracle mile gas mileage. The valve body is designed for quicker shifts to reduce wear on the transmission and to waste less engine power, but it's programmed to shift at only 4,500 RPM. The low stall speed converter limits slippage and complements the 7.5's power curve at low RPM. It delivers a more direct feeling in response to the throttle and shifting through gears. It's also very effective for compression braking downhill. That's the 70 supercar trademark, speed with such seemingly little effort. The 7.5's direct fuel injection and more complete combustion of the stratified charge deliver an amazing 22% increase in fuel economy. The 7.5 liter is rated at 14 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway. It beats the 220 horsepower Chrysler Lean Burn 400 in the EPA rating contest by three miles per gallon city and one mile per gallon highway. Highway MPG averaged over several trips was a solid 15.5 in real world conditions. The biggest surprise was city driving where we got 12.3 miles per gallon. One faction of editors believed that the fuel injection actually made us better drivers because response to slight throttle movements was immediate and substantial. The GT's mellifluous exhaust pipes and unsilenced intake moan boost gas mileage too. And they bring back the audio erotic sounds of the 60s. It became a ritual for certain members of our editorial staff to venture out for late evening jaunts just to listen to the intake moan and the exhaust rat-a-tat. With its purposeful throbbing idle and wild stripes, the GT inevitably attracted stoplight challengers. Most of our competition drove the latest in fashionable tape stripe street machines, Trans Ams and 5.0 Mustang Cobras with a few roadrunners to break up the monotony. Many of the hot foots that we shut down asked us about the car's engine once they had caught up to us at the next light. The high cost of the engine did not dissuade anyone from considering a trade. It's especially tempting to opt for the expensive 7.5 liter when you consider that the big V8 performance comes with a small V8 fuel economy. These days it adds up quickly, especially if you rack up a lot of miles. It's certainly what you can tell the wife when you order it. What made the 60s supercars so much fun is that you didn't need to be doubling the speed limit to get the feeling that the car was chomping at the bit to do just that. It's in that eagerness that the fuel-injected 7.5 truly gratifies. It's something that's been rare since clean air became all the rage in Washington, D.C. It also helps to be planted safely in your seat and on a suspension that doesn't grind the front tires to bits and pitch the car into bizarre poses on turns. The 7.5 liter engine is definitely a better idea, but clearly many Ford buyers will balk at a $7,000 price tag. Adding air conditioning, cruise control, and power locks and windows would push it to nearly $8,000. Then again, this kind of performance can't be had from Italy without four or five times more money. Even though it is not a cheap car, we find it one of the all-time bargains. It just feels good to drive a car that's built to move you with some sound and fury.